this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. Pope Francis, in meeting with the president of Rwanda at the Vatican, again asked God's forgiveness for the failures of the Catholic Church during the 1994 Rwanda genocide and for the hatred and violence perpetrated by some priests and religious. Rome Reports has more on the Pope's words and the meaning from the Vatican. The Pope had a meeting with Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda. They greeted each other with this handshake. The Pope explained why the press was present. As usual with the visits of leaders from around the world, the Holy See later explained the content of the meeting. The Pope expressed his grief over the genocide committed against the Tutsis and apologized for the sins and failings of the church and its members, among whom priests and religious men and women who succumbed to hatred and violence, betraying their own evangelical mission. In fact, many of them were tried for their participation in the genocide, either by the Rwandan courts, the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, or the Belgian courts. Some were convicted, others were acquitted. The Rwandan church also asked for forgiveness last November through a letter signed by the country's nine bishops. At the exchange of gifts, the president gave the pope a tribal scepter. Pope Francis, on his part, gave him a medallion with the inscription, the desert will become a garden. He also presented him with the three documents of his pontificate, Amoris Laetitia, Evangelii Gaudium, and Laudato Si. The Pope said goodbye to the president and his wife, asking them to pray for him, and he blessed the people of Rwanda. Since the genocide, relations between the African country and the Holy See have been practically broken. This meeting is an important step forward. Some 800,000 and perhaps as many as 1 million people, most of whom belong to the Tutsi ethnic group, died in the bloodshed carried out from April to July in 1994. In news from around the country, Bishop Frank Duane of Venice, Florida, who is chairman of the Bishop's Committee on Domestic Justice and Human Development, sent a letter March 17th to House members about the health care bill. The letter was released by the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops on March 20th. In the letter, the bishops praised life protections in the bill, but other provisions, including those related to Medicaid and tax credits, he said are troubling and must be addressed before the measure is passed. Bishop Duane said the current federal health care law is by no means a perfect law, noting the U.S. bishops registered serious objections at the time of its passage in 2010. However, he said in attempting to improve the deficiencies of the Affordable Care Act, health care policy ought not create other unacceptable problems, particularly for those who struggle on the margins of our society. The letter also said the bishops looked forward to working with Congress to address the problems found in the Affordable Health Care Act to ensure that all people can benefit from comprehensive quality health care that they can truly afford. Back to the Vatican now. It's a typical busy week for Pope Francis, but in particular, there are a couple of big events on the Pope's agenda at the end of the week. Rome Reports gives us some details on the Pope's week. This week, Pope Francis has two important appointments. The first will be on Friday, March 24th at 6 p.m., when he will meet with the European Union heads of state and government. They will come to Rome to remember the treaties that founded this union and relaunch the European project. Perhaps the Pope will recall the message he delivered to many of these leaders in May 2016. He asked Europe to be strong and capable of overcoming its fears. Un nuovo umanesimo, bas basato su tre capacità. La capacità di integrare, la capacità di dialogare e la capacità di generare. The next big event of the week will be the following day, Saturday, March 25th. Pope Francis will visit Milan, the largest diocese in Europe. The trip to the city of fashion will begin in one of the most popular neighborhoods where the Pope will spend time with its residents. He will then visit the Duomo and eat lunch with 100 prisoners in prison. In the afternoon, he will celebrate Mass and conclude the visit by meeting with the youth in the San Siro Stadium. During the rest of the week, the Pope will continue his daily Masses at Casa Santa Marta, preside over Wednesday's general audience, and end the week with Sunday's Angelus Prayer. 
And finally in the news, the Vatican has released the Pope's schedule for his upcoming two-day pilgrimage to the Shrine of Our Lady of Fatima in Portugal. The Pope will be visiting May 12th and 13th to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Blessed Virgin Mary's apparitions to three shepherd children May 13th, 1917. The apparitions continued once a month until October 13th, 1917, and later were declared worthy of belief by the Catholic Church. Some of the highlights of the visit will be an evening recitation of rosary and celebration of Mass on the anniversary. The Pope will also meet with the President and Bishops of Portugal. Pope Francis will be the fourth pontiff to visit the Marian Shrine, following in the footsteps of Blessed Paul VI, St. John Paul II, and Pope Benedict XVI. The Pope has also accepted an invitation from Egypt's President and top religious leaders to visit Cairo, April 28th and 29th. While saying details of the trip would be published soon, the announcement said the two-day trip would be focused on Cairo, the capital city. It will be the Pope's 18th trip abroad in his four years as Pope and the seventh time he visits a Muslim-majority nation. Well, that is all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic News throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.